So it's been about a month since the Arsenal update launched, and within it came a whole round of changes to already existing attachments, but also some brand new ones. The selection of attachments available to weapons expanded as a result, which begs the question, after all these changes and new additions, how should you be building your weapons for the best results? G'day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today we're going to be discussing attachments and how to best utilise them after the Arsenal update. So I think it goes without saying that there's a lot of attachments in the game, some of which exist only on certain classes of weaponry and have drastically different impacts as a result. If we were to go through every attachment in the game and all the different use cases that are applied there, we're going to be here all day. So let's firstly establish the scope of this video and what will be involved. We are only going to be focusing on attachments that deal with weapon accuracy and handling. Minimal changes happen to things like soft point and high velocity ammo, you know, with the exception of them only being added to more weaponry, and there's not really much point in going over things like underbarrel grenade launchers or dark light flashlights as it misses the scope of this video. They don't necessarily affect weapon performance directly, only add utility to said weapon. In the update, the weapon attachments that impact weapon cone of fire values, recoil values, or anything of the sort saw the largest shakeup. So that will be the focal point of today. Anytime you make a decision as to what attachment you're going to be running that has an impact on your weapon performance directly, it's an important thing to get right. Oh, and by the way, we're only going to be focusing on automatic and burst fire weapons here as well, gang. Scout rifles and weapons of the sort don't really need that much explaining at this level either. But okay, let's get things started with some of these attachments. We'll start off with the barrel attachments and I want to get the most basic one here out of the way right quick, the compensator. The compensator probably has the easiest to decipher effect here in regards to working out where and when you should be equipping it. It reduces your vertical recoil by 30% at the cost of a 15% reduction to hip fire cone of fire accuracy. The long and short of it is is that if you're finding yourself with the vertical recoil on a particular weapon being a bit too harsh to deal with then the compensator is your ally. The compensator is a common find on a higher damage model weapons as they typically sport stronger kicks per shot by comparison to your faster firing counterparts. And any weapon where you do have a heavier kick per shot is also where you'll find the most amount of bang for your buck with a compensator purchase. You can see the impact here on our Gauss saw comparison when it comes to how the recoil turns out with and without a compensator. The vertical kick per shot here is reduced by 0.165 degrees, moving the vertical recoil from 0.55 to 0.385 degrees per shot. Huge stuff at the end of the day. However, the compensator's effect being percentage based, this will be a common consideration as we go through the video, means that weapons with lower vertical kicks per shot, like the TR's Torque 9 for example, sees little benefit because, well, a 30 percent reduction of nothing amounts to little impact. You can see the difference here between the recoil with and without the compensator is minimal at best. There's only a 0.087 degree difference in recoil per shot with that compensator equipped on the Torque 9, bringing down the return on investment quite a bit here. Now yes, obviously cumulatively that benefit is going to be felt the longer you hold down the trigger, but at that point things like Cone of Fire Bloom are going to be a bigger problem. Just something to keep in mind. The compensator is probably one of those attachments as well that will simply mean less to you as you progress from a skill perspective as a player. Vertical recoil is the easiest aspect of weaponry control to account for as you just need to pull down on your mouse to account for it. As you continue to grow, this may be an attachment you find yourself retiring more and more over the years. I know it's something that I've been retiring a lot more often as of late. Let's now move on to one of the new barrel attachments, the one that I have to say is quickly becoming my favourite barrel attachment out there, the heavy barrel. The heavy barrel will reduce your cone of fire bloom per shot by 20% while aiming down the sights, at the cost of a 20% reduction to aimed movement speed, trading mobility for greater sustained accuracy at the end of the day. And that's the key point here, sustained accuracy. We've all been there. Moments where your cone of fire bloom gets the better of you and you start painting the outline of your target with bullets as opposed to filling their face with them. The heavy barrel helps to combat this problem. Now, out of the gate, no. It's not a complete replacement to a good trigger finger that knows when to back off the weapon and let it settle, but it certainly allows you to plant a couple of extra rounds onto a target before needing to let off that trigger accordingly. Now, much like the compensator, this is an attachment that you can quite easily grow out of via burst control, but I would argue that under the hands of a skilled player, the heavy barrel has a bit more value to it, as it keeps your cone of fire smaller, making smaller targets like, say, heads easier to hit with better aim. 
But again, I also know plenty who would prefer to maintain aimed movement speed. It just depends on your approach to the game. So where does the heavy barrel work best? Well, it kind of works brilliantly on any gun it can go on, assuming as someone who aims well and aims down sight at every given opportunity. The standouts, however, have to be any heavier hitting weapon that sports, say, a 167 damage model and above. Let me explain. Weapons with such damage models, such as your TMG-50, GD-22S, and Flare VE-6, for example, all tend to sport more aggressive bloom per shots by comparison to the lighter hitting guns out there as a balancing metric, to require more trigger discipline to apply that damage accurately. All those LMGs sport aiming down sight cone of fire blooms of 0.06 per shot. Throwing on the heavy barrel brings that down to 0.048 per shot, which actually makes said weapons incredibly accurate. You can see that in action with the side-by-side -side comparison we have here with the TMG-50, one running the heavy barrel and one not. The same effect applies to weapons like the HC-1 Cougar, EM-6, and Pulsar C, all of which can also take the attachment and sport the same Cone of Fire Bloom stats. So yeah, for those styles of weapons, where rate of fire isn't typically on your side and accuracy of your heavy hitting rounds is king, the heavy barrel does wonders. On the flip side though, there's something to be said about running it on faster firing weapons too. I've been using the heavy barrel on the Butcher a lot as of late, and the result is pretty solid, pushing the bloom per shot from 0.05 down to 0.04, which goes a long way cumulatively under sustained fire. Once again, note the comparison in bloom and how much tighter the spread is as a result. But okay, let's swing to the complete opposite side of the spectrum here, the short barrel. The short barrel reduces cone of fire bloom while hip firing by 40% at the cost of an increase to your vertical recoil by 20% while Aiming. Now, let's be entirely honest with ourselves here. We already know where an attachment like this goes. On weapons that, say, used to have access to advanced laser sights. While this attachment doesn't match the outright hipfire accuracy that the advanced laser sight brought to the party once upon a time, it without a doubt makes up for it in long-term consistency. Weapons such as, say, the GD7F see a pretty big impact from this attachment, which you can see here with the general spread and dispersion of rounds here as the burst plays out in the comparison. Now, of course, there is that 20% increase to aim down sights vertical recoil while you are running the short barrel. But look, as we've said before, vertical recoil is something that you can very easily grow out of considering to be a big problem as you get better at the game. And once you get used to dealing with vertical recoil, then an extra 20% of such doesn't really feel like a problem. So on those weapons where abusing crazy hipfire accuracy and zipping around the map flat out like a lizard drinking is the encouraged playstyle, it feels pretty good to run. I even ran it on the Orion for a bit, and I have to say, honestly, I didn't really feel much of an impact on the vertical recoil, but definitely felt the benefit when it came to the hipfire cone of fire buff, so that was something worth considering in my opinion. Okay, let's now move on to rail attachments here. For the most part, there's not much new stuff here, but we'll still go over it because, well, it's good to consider in the grand scheme of things. Sticking with the hipfire theme for a bit, the laser sight. It increases your base hipfire cone of fire accuracy by 33%. Pretty simple, and as we already said, works wonders with weapons that can also equip the short barrel. There's not really much else to this attachment that's worth going over here, so we're going to move on pretty quickly, but top tip for the day, in case people didn't know this, you can turn off your laser sight attachment, but still keep the benefits. Just so you don't have to have that, you know, big obnoxious laser alerting enemies to your presence like the bat signal. But anyway, let's move on to the basic forward grip, a tried and tested attachment that many have sworn by for years, and for good reason. The forward grip reduces horizontal recoil by 25% at the cost of an increase to weapon swap time by 0.15 seconds, which honestly ain't such a big deal for the benefits that this attachment brings to some weapons. The 25% reduction encapsulates all elements of horizontal recoil control as far as I'm aware, impacting the intensity of each horizontal kick per shot, the horizontal tolerance that dictates how many times a weapon can kick in one direction before returning to center, and I'm pretty sure the recoil angle if there is one is affected as well, but I could be wrong about that. Either way, weapons with incredibly shaky recoil patterns see some pretty big benefits from such an attachment. I know that some combat medic and engineer players tend to steer clear of it due to how often you find yourself switching off your weapon to your support tools. And and that weapon swap time kind of ends up being a pain in the ass considering how often you are swapping off and onto your weapon, but in my opinion it's still worth considering the forward grip regardless because horizontal recoil is the random side of recoil in this game and it's a true bastard to tame as a result. You can see it here on the T9 carve. The weapon sees a tighter correlation horizontally, giving you the ability to just focus a bit more on the vertical recoil and chain those headshots as needed. 
The angled forward grip, on the other hand, is the new kit on the block that is fighting for that sweet, tender grasp of your non-trigger hand. The angled forward grip sports a reduction of your first shot recoil by 60%, which sounds pretty good on paper, but it also increases horizontal recoil by 10%, which is a big deal. We were just a moment ago talking about the importance of horizontal recoil and the importance more so of countering it wherever possible. And now we have an attachment that makes it more unpredictable and annoying to deal with. Not exactly the best scenario here. If we were to put, say, an angled forward grip on the T9 Carve and compare it against the T9 Carve running the standard grip, we can see a pretty stark difference in how controllable the weapon is. For my numbers guys out there, post-attachment effects applied, we have a 0.1603 degree kick per shot up against a 0.2351 degree kick per shot. The angled grip in this situation doesn't solve a big enough problem to make it worth the downsides it inherits. Weapons with sloppy horizontal recoil patterns typically don't have first shot multipliers that are going to be a big enough deal and running an attachment to address that problem doesn't add up in the grand scheme of things when it negatively impacts the other side of things so heavily. In saying that, it isn't without its uses. Weapons with typically straight and narrow horizontal recoils with minimal shake even under longer bursts don't get punished as heavily by a 10% increase. Again, a percentage-based increase of nothing typically amounts to a negligible end impact. So when we apply the angled forward group to say the Gauss Saw, we see an increase in the horizontal recoil from 0.175 to 0.1925. And when you're dealing with a first shot recoil of 0.9075, well, the results can be pretty decent. On weapons that you see yourself tap firing a considerable amount, you'll see the angled grip serve a bit of use. I have to admit it's the attachment that sees the least amount of use from me right now, but on weapons where horizontal recoil is so minimal that it's absolutely something I don't even consider, like say the Goss or even the Goss Prime, yeah, it's an attachment that I do run from time to time. There's also one more use for it, but I'll get to that in a second. Whew, all right, so you're still here? Good. Hope all that made sense. That should have given you guys an idea as to what attachments work best for what archetypes of weapons. And it should give you an idea as to what attachments best assist you in dealing with certain elements of weaponry handling. Now, let's talk about some of the combinations that create some really epic synergies under the right circumstances. For one, the heavy barrel and regular forward grip now makes for an amazing sustained fire combination that lets you keep both your crosshair and your cone of fire nice and tight under longer bursts. The heavy barrel ensures that you aren't punished for holding down the trigger a little longer than you should, and the forward grip keeps your recoil over time nice and vertical, making it easy to control from a end user perspective. Any weapon where this combination exists, the weapons sort of become Beamatron 9000s, and you aren't really left to worry about the more troublesome elements of weapon handling in this game. If you wanted to eliminate all elements of recoil, then you can replace the heavy barrel with a compensator and you have a winning build that kicks less, but just needs to be bursted more often. And speaking of bursting, the angled forward grip and the compensator on burst fire assault rifles and carbines, where it is available that is, has absolutely no right being as good as it is. Allow me to explain. The angled forward grip reduces your first shot recoil of every burst by 60%, as we talked about earlier, which means that every squeeze of the trigger for a new burst, that benefit's coming your way. On, say, two round burst weapons, that impact is happening every two rounds. You have a vertical recoil reduced by 60%. Throw on a compensator for an additional percentage buff, and the recoil is essentially null and void at this point. Oh, and the horizontal recoil on these burst fire weapons is typically... Well, it's about as hidden as the VS Cloaker on a capture point that has stabbed you one too many times. It's a true combination that dials burst fire weapons to 11 wherever it's available. The short barrel and laser sight is obvious, and we alluded to that earlier, so yeah, if you want a hip fire to victory, that's how you're going to do it. I'm not going to spend any more time on that combination. But folks, I now want to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts on the attachment system in the game right now? What are some of your favorite attachments to throw on certain weapons? Let me know how much fun you've been having with it in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, backhand the like button. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. And if you're new here, do me a favor, consider backhanding the subscribe button while you're at it, guys. It keeps you up to date with whenever we go live on YouTube here in the future and whenever we release a brand new video. If you want to support the channel further, consider a channel membership. Use the join button down below and have a look at our tiers. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.